Well, thanks a lot for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on E on those thoughtful Thursday morning. And of course, we're still continuing with the coverage and celebrating the life of Winnie Matikizela Mandela, Mama Winnie, as affectionately known by South Africans who passed away on Monday at the age of 81. We're joined now in studio by the Speaker of the National Assembly, also ANC NEC member, Balek Ambete, to tell us more about a relationship and perhaps really tell South Africa just about the legacy of this iconic woman. Remember to be part of our conversation. You can give us a call double one four four seven one seven four two alternatively one six two zero and also do feel free to leave your comments on our Facebook as well as our Twitter pages thank you so much for joining us this morning always a pleasure to have you on the sunrise couch thank you very much for inviting me of course on a sad occasion mm. but uh, it's always good to be able to reflect together as South Africans absolutely you know I was saying to you the off air that I was I'm I'm, I'm a little bit agitated and I'm agitated at the fact that it took Mama's death for us to fully understand and fully replay the role in which she had in ensuring a democratic dispensation in South Africa. So not even understanding what she's gone through, we're not understanding the torture. We almost go past that torture and think that she just arose as this iconic leader. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit and document the history so we can educate even young people about really the cost of freedom, because maybe that's the problem. We don't understand how much freedom costs. You know, I use the word reflect mm. advisedly because I think occasions like these are not just deaths. They are not just stat statistics. Mm. They are not just occasions on which we come out beautifully dressed, made up, and we say our bit and we go back home. Mm. I think it's time to think about this life that has passed. This life that was so great that actually, I don't think even the stories we're telling in, in this week and next week are going to be able to capture yeah. the fullness, the extent of, in fact, greatness of this woman. Because this was a woman to whom everything happened that would be able to break a human being. Absolutely but she would respond at that moment, but she would pull herself together and get on with life and continue to be an example to us on whatever aspect of life at that moment that she would have been dealing with. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking as a person who at one point was in the leadership of the ANC Women's League, where when we were dealing with the difficulty in the relationship between our parents, Dada and Mama Wini. Some of us had to focus on the old man while others were around her. Mm. And therefore, of course, we would look at her and feel that, hey, nah, you mama man, you know. But the point is, how else could she have been? What else was she supposed to do? And I think that that's an important thing. You know, it's been remarkable to watch even international media criticize. You know, they say, no, she was not necessarily an icon. She was an individual who was a murderer. In, in fact, some reports were even saying she was a murderer. And then you sit back and you go, do people actually understand history? Whom did she murder? How is history being told? And if we don't tell our own stories, someone else is going to be articulating those stories for us. I actually think that uh, yet a book must be written mm. about the, the stories of Winnie's life. I came across details of some of what was happening around Mama Winnie's life around the time when certain of the young comrades who were in the hands of the Mandela uh, Football Club ended up losing their lives. And what comes out is that she didn't murder anyone. She admitted to the whole world when we were all at the TRC uh, process. Yeah. She said things went horribly wrong. Part of what went horribly wrong is that indeed there were young people who lost their lives. But no one said to us, 
or there is no evidence that comes to light that says she ever murdered anybody. But clearly, in that space, the enemy sent its own people. The enemy did put people there who were going to play the role of confusing all of us, of making things look like among ourselves we have a leader who is a murderer. Mm. And I am saying anyone who can give us an, a bit of evidence that we need murdered anybody, why are they waiting with it? We sit here in South Africa with people like the Dr. Basson and all of these uh, uh, people from the old order mm. who are walking around. There's nothing wrong with them. And yet we want to point fingers at Winnie Mandela. I think we should have another think. Yeah. I think we should reflect very deeply as South Africans about the story of our struggle. Mm. What actually happened? We had to go and agree in that process leading up to the TRC and in fact in the outcome of the TRC that for the sake of the future for the sake of the of peace let us let bygones be bygones mm. let history remain where it is let us focus on moving forward now if we are going to be told that our history is a history that we must be ashamed of in fact we as the women of South Africa are saying there is nothing like that that's going to happen, not, not over the body of Winnie Mandela. Let's talk about the we as women in South Africa, because, you know, um, when the EFF leader, Julius Malema, says something very interesting, and of course you would appreciate that the media documented this, that she should have actually been president. Just asking, and I'm not saying that she should have been president, do you think we gave her enough support or enough credit for what she did and the, the situation she was placed under to ensure that indeed this country sees freedom. Because at some point, you didn't even see her as a woman. You saw her as a freedom fighter. Come in 1994, do you think enough was being done to actually honor this woman as the African National Congress? I think I prefer for us right now to say you know, we didn't realize what she went through. Mm. You know, we didn't realize the more positive aspects of her contribution mm. and the situation she was in, and therefore even what would have led to many of the images of anger, because you see her as a very angry, angry person, yeah. and there was everything for her to be angry about. There is nothing that must keep a mother laughing and happy when her children are being murdered left, right, and center, and some of the things that, in fact, were being done to her as an individual woman who was being wrenched away mm -hmm. from her children, who was being uh, denied the, the life of a married woman. I mean, for goodness sake, she was 23 when Madiba was, was going through uh, uh, the treason trial, mm -hmm. and the next thing he was behind bars for 27 years. And at the age of 36, how many times has she been incarcerated? Just at 36, before it even happened with the 16 months. She'd been incarcerated several times yes. as a result of that. You look at her life in, in, in detention, and then you understand that actually this woman had to endure more pain, and this is why that quote of hers is iconic, that I'm a product of my enemies as well. Because she had to endure more pain and even more fear than what we could ever imagine. And maybe the problem here, uh, Balek, is that we do not, as, even as black people, we don't speak about what happened in those prisons. Our young people know about Jan van Riebeck, but our young people don't understand what freedom costs. One of the saddest stories that, in fact, is infuriating when you think about it mm. is one that was told by Tandi Mudisa yesterday in an interview where she reflects on a day in parliament as an MP she is addressing, and one comrade who's in the ANC caucus benches yeah. just you know, starts shedding tears, a male comrade. And when Tandi tries to find out wh why, why are you crying? I mean, you know, she's uh, speaking very well over there. And he is reflecting and is remembering the humiliation she was taken through while she was behind bars, paraded in the men's section, naked, 
right? Mm. Deliberately to break her spirit, but not only that, to break the spirit of the husband who is also at that time behind bars. Mm. She didn't talk about those things. She was too busy focusing on what needs to be done because she was so much of a carer right up to the end of her days. And what was amazing about Winnie, the person, the character, is the courage to put her personal things aside and always be a person preoccupied with other people. Mm -hmm. And I want to share one small story. When, when I was still chairperson of the ANC, yeah. we were in a National Executive Committee meeting. I get a note from Comrade Winnie as an NEC member mm. asking me to, to let her have permission to leave the meeting. And she says in the note, she explains, I have to go, this, these are the months just towards Madiba leaving us. Mm. And the family is already anticipating, so there are some family discussions. Mm. She says, I have to go and intervene in support of my little sister, Rasa. Do you hear what I'm saying? I have to go and intervene in support of in my little sister. In support of Grasa. my little sister. How many sister. free ex-wives are able to do that today in South Africa? She says, in support of my little sister, Gracia. Mm. In discussions that were very tense inside the family, where you know how it is sometimes when you are a Magodi. No, of course. And she took the side of the other woman mm. and she came in in support of Gracia. And I was watching her, her interview, which she did last week, uh, which was reflected last week, I mean, a, a few days ago, which was done actually last year, I'm told, when I checked with the PA. She talks about Grasha as a woman that deserves her support, as a person whose situation she understood and empathized with, and therefore she took a conscious decision that while she had to play her role as the mother of Madiba's children, she also had to make sure that she gave the necessary support to Krasia. How great is that? How, How many women would do that? Mm -hmm. How many people, never mind women, would do that? Only a great person like Uwin. You know, I wish that we could have the whole day and sitting on this couch and actually reflecting on it because as I said I to you know. even off the air that we don't tell the stories enough and we don't tell the truth enough. Um, I know that we have to let you go. So thank you so much, uh, Valeka, for joining us uh, this morning. And of course, the letter that we've been showing you on screen is that letter. I know we are speaking about Grasa. Is that letter that Grasa wrote to Umamwini Matigizela Mandela. So important.